Hi. Now we want to understand the importance of deoxyribonucleic acid DNA and ribonucleic acid RNA in storing genetic information in cells. So let's discuss first about the history of molecular biology. Um, so that started, uh, people say, with the discovery of DNA structure. So at the time in 1950s, uh, Jim Watson or James Watson, uh, who is a, a young aspiring uh, microbiologist, and 35 years old Francis Crick, who is a physicist, they came together at the Medical Research Center in England. Uh, they proposed the most accurate, uh, at the time, double helix model. And that laid out the start of molecular biology. And uh, that paper came out in Nature in 1953. It's about single page paper. And that gives rise to nine years after Nobel Prize. And this is one of the biggest history as the start of molecular biology. And that story is fascinating. And I think you have to read about it. And one aspect of uh, another uh, one who got Nobel Prize together is Maurice Wilkins, who provided an, uh, a critical experimental evidence by using X-ray diffraction pattern of the DNA crystal molecule. And for this, uh, I'm sure many of you already have read and introduced a number of references for this story. So Watson and Crick's structure for deoxyribonucleic acid. And, and this is the major paper I want to go through with you, and that's the meaning is the first correct double helix model of DNA. And uh, there are a number of other references. Crick's double helix, a personal view. Uh, let me see. So in Nature, uh, this is an article. And double helix by Jim Watson. I put it here. So double helix is a personal account of the discovery of the structure of DNA, which is uh, very interestingly written. And I also personally like to read a Crick's, Crick's book called What Mad Pursuit. This is a personal view of scientific discovery. You will realize Watson and Crick has a different background, different personality, different viewpoints. So that would be interesting. Another interesting book is called Francis Crick by Matt Ridley and the Discoverer of Genetic Code. So hopefully you can take a look at this book uh, when you have a time. And uh, let me just briefly, because this is such a historically important one, I want to go through with you a little bit. So this is a single page paper uh, went to submit to the nature and that changes the biology fundamental aspectly. So the title is Molecular Structure of Nucleic Acid and a structure for DNA. Why is this such an important? Uh, in fact, Watson and Crick did not discover DNA. It was discovered the years ahead. And there has been accumulated knowledge which indicates DNA as a very important material for genetic in, in, in heredity. So what they attack this problem is, hey, we have to understand the three-dimensional structure of DNA molecule. By knowing structure, it may lead to its function. And that is very important aspect. So hopefully you guys, when you start, find the topic of yourself, think about what's the most important problem at the field and attack that fundamental problem. So here, uh, let's go through a little bit because it's, it's interesting and it's relevant. A structure for nucleic acid has already been proposed by Pauling and Corey. Remember Pauling, Linus Pauling, who got you know, twice of Nobel Prize, uh, one for the discovery uh, of these protein structures and the other for Nobel Peace Prize. And in fact, at the time, it was a, uh, a competition between Caltech's Pauling Group and MRC in England. And of course, this Watson and Crick was a very young scientist. 
and but they have a friend who is a polling the son who is at the time working as a postdoc at MRC and through him he actually know polling just proposed a structure of DNA in proceedings of National Academy of Science or PNAS which is a prestigious journal but they realize there's a glitch because polling proposed a triple helix model which turned out to be wrong afterwards. So they say this structure is unsatisfactory for two reasons. And then what they instead propose is instead of triple, they propose double helix model, so which is shown in here. And the structure has two helical chains, each coiled around the same axis in this diagram. And the novel feature of the structure is the manner in which the two chains are held together by the purine and pyrimidine bases. As I alluded to you before, there's a purine and pyrimidine. This is DNA base. And it has been found experimentally that the ratio of the amount of adenine to thymine, so AT, and the ratio of guanine to cytosine, GC, are always very close to unity, one, for deoxynucleic acid. So this is very key aspect at the time known. In fact, this is uh, found by Shagaf, uh, discovered by Shagaf, that why is A and T, the amount in DNA is almost the same, and G and C, the amount is almost the same. That gives a, a very important hint. But, you know, who made this utilization and then proposed a structure? of DNA is Watson and Crick and their contribution. And why this paper is such an importance has, because of this sentence, it has not escaped our notice that this specific pairing we have postulated. At the time, this is still postulation, immediately suggests a possible copying mechanism for the genetic material. So this is key aspect a clue that why we inherit, why we look similar to our parents. And, and that goes down to down to down. Where comes this genetic information stored and being copied to next generation? And how our one single cell generate another cell which has the same imprint or blueprint. And we have also been stimulated by knowledge of general nature of unpublished experimental research and ideas of Dr. Morris Wilkins. And there's a Dr. Rosalind Franklin, and she unfortunately has died from ovarian cancer at the early age of, I think, 37, who didn't get the Nobel Prize. So I urge you to a home, home exercise is go to this uh, website and read the article of discovery of DNA structure and function, and Watson and Crick. So let's go back to the nucleotide basis, and we call it as, following their names, Watson Crick base pairing. So the nucleotide composed of four different kinds adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, or in RNA case, instead of using thymine, we use a uracil. Okay, so you can see this pentose, phosphate, and DNA base. So this A and C, T, G is a building block monomer, monomer of nucleot uh, nucleic acid, and that's a nucleotide. And they polymerize into a linear sequence of this A, T, G, C, T, T. And this has uh, it's called single strand uh, nucleic acid. And while DNA is in fact a double stranded in, in most cases, so you see found the another one, but when they do interact, uh, you can see A always interact with the T, T goes to A, and G, guanine goes to C, and C goes to G. So this is a complementary matching and the secret inside is the hydrogen bonding for each to be matched. So when they interact, they form a 
helix structure, double helix structure, and we call this a hybridization. And this single nucleic acid chain can combine with another, so complementary means A always go to G, T always go to C, okay, vice versa, and to form a double helix. And this process of two single strands of DNA assembling into a double-stranded DNA is called hybridization and in molecular biology, DNA hybridization. When these two strands have complementary sequence. So that's very important. What it means is if we know the information of one strand of DNA, let's coming from parents and you readily can make another one which is complementary, then that information is identical. Now, these DNA, the genetic information can pass from one to another. And that's the secret of our life. So let's go down a little more that we mentioned about purine and pyrimidine from uh, Watson and Crick's nature paper. And what that means is this DNA basis, if you look at that one, the G and A, guanine and adenine actually have these two ring structures while thymine and cytosine has this one ring structure. And in fact, they have this dotted line, it's a hydrogen bonding. So this is why G goes to C and A interacts with T specifically for DNA. How about RNA? RNA, the nucleotides are almost the same, except this thymine is replaced with a uracil, which is also similar shape, so it's a similar. So Watson and Crick space pairing rule tells if we have one DNA strand and the complementary DNA strand will be matching in this way. While, you know, for producing a protein, we use DNA as a blueprint to produce RNA and protein. So for that process, we need to have a DNA as a template. And then we you, we have this, create this RNA, which is complementary. You can see A goes to not T, because RNA is uracil, AU, CG, CG, AT. Actually, I think this is a uh, mistake. This is supposed to be U, and AU, and CG. Okay, so these a single structure called pyrimidine is adenine and guanine is called purines and this cytosine and thymine is called pyrimidine or uracil, single ring structure. And this hydrogen bonding capability of these bases in fact determines these base pairing rules. And you know, as you can see here, two and three hydrogen bonding. So this force holds the complementary base pairing match between two DNA strands in a very stable double helix. And that's hydrogen bonding. So now, first part of explaining, so why is this so important? And there's a very famous dogma of molecular biology proposed by Francis Crick. So what is dogma? Dogma, we only hear from maybe religion. So it's a principle or a set of principles laid down by an authority as incontroversibly true. So it's a little weird to use dogma here, but you know, Crick used it because he observed this phenomena and our fundamental question, and in fact, the, the molecular machine in our body as a functional unit is protein. Then how this blueprint of DNA, in fact, gives out the protein, and that's where the information goes. So we think it as the information flow, and how we think about this information goes from one side to the other side. And, and that's coming summarized in this picture. So from DNA, we use this as template, and that information we transcribe. It's a copying into the RNA as a one-to-one. From DNA, we transcribe it into RNA. 
and this RNA molecule now gives rise to protein. And that process, you remember, RNA has this four monomer, A, U, G, C, this four monomer, and this A, U, G, C, blah, 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 this sequence somehow gives out the protein. And remember, the protein is polypeptide chain composed of amino acid sequence, which has about 20 different kinds. And so we have to translate these RNA sequence into a protein amino acid sequence. So that's why we named it as a translate. And who does this job is also that is a protein and using that is especially enzymes. And these enzymes called RNA polymerase. And DNA has to copy self, self replication, such as one single cell containing DNA, you know, divide and produce another one. You have to copy exactly the same genetic information. So DNA has to replicate itself, and that we call DNA polymerase. And the information comes from DNA to RNA and RNA to protein. This unidirectional information flow is recognized by Francis Crick. He named it as central dogma of molecular biology. So the process of translation and transcription that produce messenger RNA and proteins require coordinated chemical reactions, which are catalyzed by enzymes called DNA and RNA you know, these enzymes make a polymer from this unit. So polymerase, you will recognize a lot of this A's as actually naming usually enzyme. So in a nutshell, protein is a biochemical compound made one or more polypeptide chains, which perform function in cells and organisms. And the process of information transfer from DNA to RNA is called translation. And the sequence, because the sequence of nucleotide from DNA is one-to-one -one matching into another nucleic acid. And that of the RNA, we call transcription. And one kind of an RNA which is involved in making protein is called the messenger RNA. And to protein, it's information of this mRNA into a linear sequence of amino acids that require translation of mRNA sequence that will become a protein. It's called translation. So uh, the first paper who proposes this is uh, Crick in Nature and Central Dogma of Molecular Biology. We can take a look at this. And we will discuss a little bit of review of genetics to move on uh, more deeper meanings of uh, end processes of Central Dogma. Thank you for your attention.